this could also refer to ministers as Jewish people in general are exalted above and at times made lower than the non-Jewish ministers. And this book is clearly talking about uh, Jewish worship, the synagogues, after the temple's been destroyed. I just heard a rabbi speak about this recently, that uh, since the temple was destroyed, we no longer give these animal sacrifices uh, anymore, and instead we give the fruit of lips. And that's the same thing we find here stated in the New Testament. But I'm afraid there's a more sinister uh, meaning here in the New Testament um, versus animal sacrifices and sufficient. And I think this is actually referring to human sacrifice because that's something the non-Jews have always done, it seems, for a long time. And in this case, rather than sacrificing their own people, they're sacrificing the Jews, like Jesus or like other early century Christians, who uh, many of whom were Jewish themselves, were Judaizers, and they were put in the Colosseum and they were made a spectacle of, and they were killed. They were sacrificed um, for the entertainment of the Gentiles and to please uh, the gods, uh, as you could call them, or just the rulers of Rome at that time. And, and that brings me to one other point I want to make, is the Sixth Commandment, as it's translated in the Hebrew Bible, means thou shalt not murder, and it considers the motives of the heart, so self-defense is acceptable. So, for example, it's okay for Israel uh, to fight against the Palestinians, the Arabs, to surround them and outnumber them you know, for their own survival, self-preservation, self-determination. On the other hand, the Septuagint, in the Greek, you know, non-Jewish Old Testament, is translated, thou shalt not kill, which does not uh, consider the motives of the heart. And uh, as an aside, I remember when I was in college taking this American religious history course talking about the 1800s Christendom within America. It mentioned that a gentleman... Uh, or one who was genteel, which I'm pretty sure has something to do with the word Gentile, um, was not necessarily sincere. That sincerity was not a virtue. And I've read from 20th century non-Jewish leaders like Chuck Colson or Billy Graham talk about sincerity and say that sincerity of belief is not important. It's not enough uh, to be sincere. And all the emphasis uh, is placed upon the outward appearance, it seems, by these uh, Christian leaders who discount sincerity and we know in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says God does not look at the outward appearance you know, he, like a man, but he judges the heart. So sincerity is vital to Judaism. And I have one more comment to make about the Sixth Commandment, that I think there are times when non-Jews uh, say, thou shalt not kill. And what they actually mean is, is that murder is acceptable. The opposite of what Jews mean, they say murder is wrong, but killing is okay in limited circumstances. Because Jews look more at actions, it's a religion of works, you can say, of application. And so there has to be an actual crime in Judaism in order for someone to be punished, like violating the Sixth Commandment. But in non-Jewish tradition, uh, the surrounding nations of the Jews had very draconian laws where the punishment did not fit the crime. And someone could be executed or killed for almost any reason or no reason at all. And we see this continue to this day uh, in the 20th century. Uh, there was Nazi Germany and the Holocaust, and the Christians at that time uh, and other non-Jews in Germany thought that there were certain classes of people, Jews, disabled, mentally ill, and so on, that inherently deserved to be mistreated or killed, not because of anything that they had done. And so I think that's an example of uh, these non-Jews saying, thou shalt not kill, and what they actually mean is murder might be okay.